All right. So now we're going to be talking about velocity as a vector. So what is the difference between velocity and speed? The speed of an object is calculated by dividing the distance traveled by the time. Speed is then classified as a scalar quantity because it possesses only magnitude. Velocity, however, is classified as a vector quantity because of the direction or motion of the object is equally as important as its magnitude. The velocity of an object is stated relative to a frame of reference. Velocity vectors can be added. For example, when a plane flies, its velocity relative to the Earth is the resultant of the plane's velocity through the air and the velocity of the wind. So there's a simple diagram right here. I have my wind and wind speed is, is symbolized by vector W. My track and ground speed is symbolized by vector G. And my heading and airspeed is symbolized by vector A. So what I get is vector W plus vector A is equal to the resultant, which is vector G. So heading, track, and wind refer to the direction of each vector. Airspeed, ground speed, and wind speed refer to the magnitude of each vector. So let's note, airspeed is the speed of the plane relative to a person on board, or the speed of the airplane is still in still air. Ground speed is the speed of the plane relative to a person on the ground that includes the effect of the wind. So similarly, when a boat or canoe travels through water, its velocity is affected by the velocity of the current. So its velocity relative to the ground is the resultant of the boat's velocity in still water and the velocity of the current. So we have a diagram there as well. So I have my velocity of the boat in still water is vector B. My velocity of the current is represented by vector C and the ground velocity of the boats, which is vector G, which means vector B plus vector C gives me vector G. So this is the saying, uh, winds are from whence they blow, currents are to where they flow. Okay. That's just the same to help you draw these diagrams. So let's get to an example. So I have an airplane is heading north 50 degrees west at 510 kilometers per hour, where it encounters a north wind of 72 kilometers an hour determine the ground velocity of my airplane. So let's say it moves north, south, east, west. So my plane is heading northwest at an angle of 50 degrees, where it is traveling, which is my vector A, of 510 kilometers per hour. So it encounters a north wind of 72 kilometers an hour. So remember the north wind is pushing down on the plane because it's coming north, which means that right here is going to be my wind again. Remember I have to draw a parallel parallelogram diagram. And I need to figure out my resultant or determine the ground velocity of the plane. All right. So I need to determine my ground velocity of the plane. Perfect. So I have my vector A, I have my vector W, which is also here, which is the wind. So I have 50 degrees over here, which means that this angle over here is also going to be 50 degrees. So I know my magnitude of A is equal to 510, because that's how fast, that's how fast the plane is heading. And I know my magnitude of vector W, which is my wind, is equal to a value of 72. So like in the previous page, we get my wind speed plus the acceleration of the plane is equal to the ground velocity of the plane.
plane, which is vector g, which is what we want to find over here as its resultant. So remember, this is coming from north. The wind is coming from the north. So how am I able to find the magnitude of vector g? What trigonometry law do I need to use? Sine or cosine law? Cosine. So my magnitude of vector g squared is equal to 510 squared plus 72 squared minus 2 times 510 times 72 times cos of 50. When I evaluate all of this, I get about 218,077.6779. And if I square root it to get the magnitude of just g, I get approximately 466.99 kilometers per hour. Perfect. However, now we need to find at what angle the ground velocity of the plane is, which means I have to find this very tiny, tiny angle right here, which is angle theta. So what law am I going to use that is going to help me find angle theta? Sine law. So I'm going to get sine theta over 72 because it corresponds to vector w is equal to sine 50 divided by the speed that I got, which is 466.99. Once I rearrange, I get theta is approximately 6.78 degrees. And what direction is vector g traveling in? If we look at the diagram, what, what direction is vector g traveling at? Remember, it starts from the origin and is in quadrant 2. So which direction is it going in? Northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast, northwest. So if you were to determine this as a direction, this also equals two. So we are going northwest. Perfect. So now we know that vector g is 466.99 kilometers per hour. We know theta is equal to approximately 6.78 degrees. Now, because we have 50 degrees here, we have to also add that angle up. So my total angle is going to be 50 plus theta, which gives me a value of 56.78 degrees, which means that therefore the ground velocity of the plane is approximately, and Priyanshi got it right, 466.99 kilometers per hour north 56.78 degrees west because remember my resultant vector g also needs to include this 50 degrees right away okay so we can't leave that out which is why you have to add 50 and theta together to give us the angle at which the plane is going to be traveling at is everybody cool with this example right now Is everyone okay with this example? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah. 
Okay, makes sense. Good. Thank you for answering. Ashley, how about the rest of you guys? All right. Naj, are you crying right now or are you good? I'm just going to I'm just going to use that to tease you from now on. Oh, you're at work? Oh, the smokes, man. The uh hell? -huh. do at work nothing because you're right you're, you're you're at class right now <laughs> oh it's the grind yeah i remember when i had four jobs and i think what was it when i was in teacher college i used to work i used to have four jobs so i would work at a grocery store then i would work at a factory and i will also tutor on the side um and yeah it's not it's like it's not fun. It's rough, to say the least. So example two, a pilot maps out her flight plan and determines that in order to reach her destination on time, her plane must travel south 15 degrees east at 620 kilometers per hour. So we got our first piece of information. Uh, not every day, Ravi. Like, I would work two at most one day, and then uh, two, most of it would be on the weekend, and then tutoring would happen during the week, where I was never, so I wasn't a teacher, so I couldn't charge a lot. So this is the angle that's acting upon my the plane. So I have to travel 15 degrees southeast. So this is north, south, east, and west. So let's name this vector A over here, which is 620 kilometers per hour. If the wind is from southwest at 50 degrees at 45 kilometers an hour, what heading should the pilot steer and at what airspeed should she fly? So I got another force of wind over here. So southwest, and this is 50 degrees, okay? So this is, we know is 45 kilometers an hour. However, because I wanna draw my parallelogram diagram, this is going to be my vector W. So this is vector A, and that is vector W on the top. I need to figure out at what airspeed should she fly the plane at. So I know this guy's 50 degrees right here. This guy's 15 degrees. So what is this angle over here? What is this obtuse angle over here? So remember, this is 50, this is 65. What does this angle have to be then right there? Let's see. It's a simple, simple angle. Let's see if you guys can get it.
115, thank you, Priyanshu. This is 115. So the reason why it's 115 is because 60, 50, and 50 and 15 get us to be 65, and a straight line angle is just 180 minus the two angles 50 and 15, which give me 115 degrees. Okay? So when I want my results, in which way should she travel? Should she go in southwest? So she still has to travel this way. So this is going to be my vector G. And this is going to be my vector A as well. So I already know <clears throat> so vector G I already know is that in order for her to reach the destination, she has to travel 620 kilometers per hour, 15 degrees southeast. So we know that that is my plane, or that is the speed of the plane, which is vector G. So I know vector G is going to be 620 kilometers per hour, 15 degrees southeast. Okay, I know vector W is going to be 45 kilometers per hour, which is 50 degrees southwest, which means I'm left to find vector A because I need to find my airspeed. That's the one thing I'm missing is my airspeed. I don't know what it is. Okay, so my airspeed is going to be a question mark. In the diagram. G is not the same as vector G plus vector W because we know that this is only true when vector G is equal to A plus W. Okay, so don't get that confused. Yes, Priyanshu? Uh, in the diagram, shouldn't A and G swap places because it looks like A has the 15 degrees, but G is supposed to be the one with the 15 degrees? Oh, look. There we go. Yeah, that should be great. I think this should all be, yeah, 15 degrees right here. Just fix that. That was my bad. I drew it the wrong way. So vector G, so my the speed of the uh, the plane has a 15 degrees on it. So this whole thing over here is 15 degrees. That was my bad. Thank you, Priyanshu, for fixing that for me. So I need to figure out how to get the magnitude of A. So I'm going to use my cosine law again, which is the magnitude of vector A squared is equal to... 620 squared plus 45 squared minus 2 times 620 times 45 degrees times cos of 115. So again, we're focusing on this triangle right here, this one right there. So what I get is approximately 410,000, 7.09. Nine. Which means that if I square root uh, the result, I get my magnitude of A is equal to approximately 640.32 kilometers per hour. So that's going to be the magnitude of vector A. Now, what is the next thing I need to solve for? Take the heading. Perfect. So I'm going to use my sign law. So I'm going to get sine theta over 45 is equal to sine 115 over 640.32. Okay. 
equal to. So when I rearrange everything, I get theta is approximately 3.65 degrees. So remember, this whole thing is 15 over here, but I need this tiny angle right there. So what am I going to do to figure out that little tiny angle, which we will call theta? So what would it do to figure out that tiny angle called theta? If this whole angle over here is 15, what would that angle give me? So it would be 15 degrees minus theta, which gives me approximately 11.35 degrees, which means Therefore, the pilot should steer 11.35 degrees southeast at a speed of 640.32 kilometers per hour in order to reach the destination on time. Okay, so again, this all comes down to drawing the diagram properly. I made a small hiccup and Priyanshu fixed it up for me, uh, which is completely fine. Uh, stuff like that does happen. So um, that was my mistake right there. So the angle should have been drawn in regards to Dr. G, which is over here, which I fixed it. I shared it in with that red, with that red heading right there, or that red marker. So example three is uh, pretty easy. So I want you guys to do that on your own. I'll just read the question and then you guys can do that on your own. So it's a canoe can paddle at a speed of four kilometers per hour in still water. He wishes to cross a river that is 500 meters wide. That has a current of three kilometers per hour. If he wishes to reach the point directly across the river from his dock, determine the direction he must steer and the time it will take him to cross that river. Okay, so I want you guys to do that one on your own. Again, that one's a pretty easy one. So if you could do it on your own, that would be cool. I will obviously, I'm going to write down the solution as you guys are working on it. I'm just not going to.